Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Fashion Your Passion podcast. This week, I have on Dr. Erica Brown, who is a coach, a podcast host, and is just a powerhouse in general. So Erica, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sammy. I'm excited to be here. Yes, I love the term powerhouse. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's great. I'm super excited to chat with you today. Can you just give my listeners a little bit more about what you do, who you are, and just dive into the journey to get to this point today? Yeah. So what I am is I'm a coach and consultant. So I have a business that I founded last year in the middle of the pandemic um, called Dr. Erica by Design. And essentially I work with female entrepreneurs, solopreneurs who are struggle from what I call like squirrel syndrome, Mm -hmm. like mental disorganization. I help them create solid solid implementation in their business. Um, The story of how I got there, I always say I was a confused child. Um, I started as everybody in my age demographic did, you know, go to school, get a job, ended up becoming a pharmacist and working in big pharma for 16 years. So from the outside looking in, I had, you know, the greatest career ever. I was traveling. I had a company car and, you know, was going internationally. But of those 16 years, I was probably miserable 15 years. Wow. And it all kind of came to a head when, you know, your body kind of knows when you're stressed. Your body knows when it's like you need a break. Mm -hmm. This is not working for you. And I had some medical issues Mm -hmm. and eventually found myself on a work trip in beautiful San Diego, on my balcony, looking out the ocean, ready to just jump. Like I just wanted to jump and just like, it would be so much easier to just leave this stress and depression and anxiety that came with this position that was making me miserable. Yeah. Um, So went through that and actually stayed in corporate for a few years after that, believe it or not. And eventually got to the point where it's like, life is too short, right? You know, life is too short. When you are 90 years old, 80 years old, and you're sitting on that rocking chair and, you know, me and my hubby are there and we're reflecting, I I didn't want to look back and say, you know, um, I spent all my life in this job that I didn't like. I wanted to be able to look back and say, I tried to do X, Y, and Z. Or, you know, I did X, Y, and Z, or I gave it a chance and I bet on me. And once I had that mentality, it was like, you have to make a change, Erica. You have to just step out on faith and believe that you are meant to be more than just your title. You're more than your degrees, which brought me to leaving my job in uh, May of last year. I love that. That is powerful. Um, thank you for sharing that story. I appreciate your vulnerability, um, truly. Uh, I can resonate to some aspects of that story. And, you know, it's so crazy how just people have this like aha moment and then their whole life changes for them, Um, you know, and it happens at different points in everyone's lives. I mean, for me, it happened when I was 17 you know, and and for you, it happened after working in a corporate job for 16 years, you know, and so I think that it's, it's incredible that, you know, humans are, can have that moment where like, they're like, oh, crap, they're like, I got to do this thing for the rest of my life. And so what was sort of the things that, you know, brought you back to, like feeling like a person, feeling like a human again, that had a purpose that was, you know, that was really able to live a life. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there were a few things, Sammy. So when I was on that ledge, um, what stopped me was my sister called and she put my niece on the phone. So imagine having your younger niece trying to talk you off of literally a ledge. (laughs) Um, That kind of brought me back to reality quickly. It's like, Eric, you have to figure out your life because you have people that depend on you. You have people that love you. You know, you want to show a good example for her. So that was number one, was just that support system. The other thing I think that brought me back to just feeling human and and really finding myself again as Erica beyond being the pharmacist or, you know, Dr. Erica, whatever you want to call it, Mm -hmm. was I had to sort of travel back in time a little bit. Mm -hmm and really find those things that used to bring me joy as a kid. You know, when you're a kid, you just play. You just play. 
And when you become an adult, play kind of becomes like a, a taboo word because it's non-productive mm-hmm. or it's like you're wasting your time. And I had to just rediscover who I was as a kid. And as a kid, I just loved dressing up. I loved kind of just role playing and, and just being different characters. And I owe it to my husband because my husband is a comic book fan and collects Transformers. And like one of his big things was he wanted to go to New York Comic Con. Mm. And I'm a science geek. So I was like, uh, okay, sure. New York, why not? Yeah. The con, to me at that point, the con was just like icing. I was like, I'm going to New York. <laughs> so we go to the con and I'm like, well, I guess I should dress up. I don't know. But people are going to think I'm crazy. Like this is in my head, Sammy. People mm-hmm. are going to think I'm crazy if I dress up. So I went like this low key um, Iron Heart, which is the female Iron Man, mm-hmm. low key outfit, like sweatpants and a tank top. And I was terrified. And I got there and I'm like, who are these people? They're amazing. Oh my gosh. And then people actually recognize my character. They're like, Iron Heart, Iron Heart. And my husband was like, babe, they're, they're, they're talking to you. They want to take your picture. And I'm just like, uh, what do you mean? They want to take my picture. Like, I'm just in sweatpants and a tank top. But that whole experience, no matter how simplistic it was at the moment, was like earth just shattering for me because yeah. it I found my peeps in a way. Like I, through cosplay, I got this confidence, this courage to just do anything and try anything because the truth of the matter was being a pharmacist, being in pharma, people thought I was crazy. They thought I was crazy. Like, why are you wasting your money to dress up for Halloween? on a non-Halloween day. Mm-hmm. Like, why are you flying all over the place to go to these different <laughs> cons? And at that point, it's like, you know what? People are gonna think you're crazy regardless. There's always gonna be somebody that thinks you're crazy. There's always gonna be somebody that thinks you're doing something dumb or wasting your money or wasting your time. So I no longer care what you think because this makes me happy. This makes me excited. This brings back my creativity. This brings back just so much joy and peace and energy all at the same time for me. So that was like the thing that did it for me, which is being able to just find that creative outlet and just express who I am. Yeah, I love how you you said, you know, in the beginning that you went back to sort of like what brought you joy as a kid. Mm-hmm. And I find that so impactful because, you know, as we grow older, we have, you know, we're more conscious of a lot of things in the world and we forget about the time when, you know, we didn't really have a care in the world. We were taken care of, you know, by our parents and, and we were just doing our own thing and whatever we liked, we liked, and that was it. And now, you know, societal norms impact us and, and just everything, our own personal beliefs impact us. And I think, you know, passion stems from what brings you joy when no one is looking. You know, mm-hmm. when when you don't have to, you know, sort of put on this mask or portray this persona for the people who, you know, you walk outside your door to, um, mm-hmm. you know, passion is that thing that it just makes you happy. You find your people through it. You know, you do all the things and, and you know, like what after you went to that New York Comic Con, what was like, how did you begin to sort of, I guess, reinvent your life and, and to travel around the world to different cons? Like, what was that like? Like, what was that process like? It was stepwise, right? Because <laughs> after the first con, it was still, I was still a little bit timid. Yeah. Um, but I think for me, it was, I find joy in going to the cons, but I find more of my peace and joy in creating the costumes, the cosplay. Mm-hmm. Um, so the process for me was really finding characters that would bring other people joy. And I think that's what I love about cosplay is that I find these characters that people forgot about. Yeah. Like I've done Jessica Rabbit, I've done Elber Scissor Hands, mm-hmm. you know. Um, so finding those things that not only bring me joy, but bring other people joy. Yeah. Um, I, I guess that kind of answers your question. I don't know if that really answers your question or not, Sammy. <laughs> you can ask me again (laughs) no I mean yeah I mean that makes total sense and and I think that that is 
you know, a step in it, which is like, you know, now I'm doing things like now I'm doing something for another person. And so I have to sort of show up for them, which means I have more of a, uh, you know, a reason to be to, you know, I'm, I'm doing this thing. And when I go to these cons, it's like, you know, I, I have a reason to be, and I think that's, you know, it's pretty impactful because, you know, when, when you think about it, if you have sort of, um, you know, when you have sort of like just your own thing going on and you're not really doing it for anyone else, you know, you don't feel like you're making an impact. It's like, why the heck am I doing this for? Like, there's no point, you know, but when you see the impact you make, it makes it a thousand times worth it. It makes, you know, all those sleepless nights worth it. Um, you know, and I think that's like, that is a key factor to it is like, even if it's just your brother, your younger brother, younger sister, you said your niece before, like even just like one person like that, like just knowing that you make an impact can transform the way you view the things you're doing every single day. Because sometimes you get to the point where it's like, you know, I'm doing the same things every single day. Why am I doing them for? And if you know, it's because that impact you're making, then boom, it's golden. Yeah. Yeah. And I would also say, along those lines I think one of the biggest impactful moments that I had was when a little girl saw me as Jessica Rabbit now everybody knows Jessica Rabbit is not a princess right let's be honest she's not a princess but to that little girl I was the most beautiful princess she had ever seen and she was just so excited to take a picture with me and that always stuck with me in my heart so I think to your point you know it's, it is the impact that you're having on other people but I also think for me cosplay it gave me the courage to to be me, like I said, and to kind of venture out. And it also, I don't think I would be an entrepreneur right now if I hadn't done it, because I think I would have been too scared Mm -hmm. of what people would say about me leaving my corporate job. I would have been too scared to do a Facebook live or to have a podcast or to be on your podcast, you know? Um, So I think all that courage just kind of, it just overflows into my life and how I just see the world and how I'm able to interact with the world now, because I just feel a lot more free, a lot more free to be me. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I started this podcast like when I was in high school and like I was, yeah, I mean, it was only two years ago, but you know, um, <laughs> but well, now I feel awesome. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. No, 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 no. You're, you're not. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, but you know, when I first started, like I was that kid who didn't really, I mean, I'm a huge introvert, you know, but I was a kid who didn't really talk to anyone. I was, you know, the kid who just like kept themselves and didn't really, you know, didn't really care about anyone else's business. And I just was like, I was like, focus on my things. And that was it. And this podcast, like I was forced to talk to other people. I had to have, you know, I, I didn't have to, but I wanted to have guests in the podcast. I wanted to have different voices on the podcast. And, you know, I started out with people I was comfortable with. I started out with my friends and my teachers. And then I was like, wait, I was like, I interviewed them all already. What do I do now? You know? And so I joined podcast groups and I was like, I have to interview strangers now. And I was like, this is a, this is the thing that I'm gonna have to do. And so, yeah. you know, uh, luckily I've learned, you know, how to sort of deal with the whole situation. Um, but it was nerve wracking at first. I mean, I still get nervous to this day for people, right. you know, right. and it's like, it just, I feel so much better though, in just every area of my life, just from interviewing people on this podcast, mm-hmm. you know, and it's so, it's so fascinating how like one thing could like change everything about your life. Yeah. I completely agree. I'm an introvert too, believe it or not, I am. Um, And even in doing cosplay, right? Starting my own podcast, just like you, I was terrified, terrified. I was going to sound, you know, ridiculous. I was going to have dead air, like everything that could possibly go wrong. I thought was going to go wrong Yeah. um, for the show. But to your point, it's like, once you get into it and once you start having these conversations and sharing the stories of, for me, my show is all women, Mm -hmm. um, sharing their stories, you just kind of, the way that you feel inside when you're done and the way that you feel inside when you can see the guests and their faces and their emotions and you hear from the the people that are watching or listening, it just does something for your soul. You know what I mean? Like it just, it makes it all worth it. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are my favorite days of the week because I get to interview people and just talk and just have them share their stories and know that it's going to make an impact on, you know, someone else's life. And so it's super, super fun for me. But I want to I want to ask you because I'm actually very, very curious about this. Um, When you like 
what was like that moment where you're like, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a coach and a consultant. Like, how did that shift become? It was a long shift. (laughs) (laughs) It was a long winding road. So a lot lot of people probably look at me and think like, oh, one day she just quit her job. But literally I had been working on myself ever since that day I was on the ledge, right? On myself and just trying to figure out why that would happen or why I would want to do that. So I had a coach in the past. I've had several different coaches Mm -hmm. um, that kind of helped me work through what it was that I wanted to do. And I've tried several different things from fitness to travel, whatever. Um, But it came down to the fact that I think I wanted to be an entrepreneur because I always tell my husband, I don't like people, which is so not true, (laughs) but (laughs) I can't explain it. Like, I feel like I'm not, I don't fit into that space of corporate. Yeah. You know, I just never felt comfortable there. I always felt like I could do something better. or I could make it better, you know? Um, And just working for other people, I don't think it's something that is meant for me. So I knew that I needed to figure out something that I could do. Now, entrepreneurship, some people say they have the entrepreneurial bug. I did not. Mm -hmm. Like that was never my dream. Um, But I, like I said, I knew I had to get something, I had to figure out something. So Mm -hmm. I'm kind of like the learning entrepreneur because I'm learning as I grow. Right. So I think once I figured out that I could no longer stay in corporate and I began to hear stories from women who felt like me, mm-hmm. I kind of had this passion to want to help them, yeah. to help them make those career transitions or to help them say, screw society. Yeah. I don't care what you think. I'm going to do me. And if I'm a doctor and I want to be a stripper, I'm going to go be the best stripper I can or whatever you want to do. Absolutely. You know, so that's kind of how my entrepreneurial journey started, I was working with those types of women. And as I've learned, and as any entrepreneur out there learns, kind of where you start sometimes is not where you end up going. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, so I started to work with those women and realize that I was completely leaving out a part of me that is innately me, that actually is my passion, which is organization planning and just kind of strategy. Mm -hmm. And I started to lean into that more. And that's where my, my entrepreneurial journey is ending up now is working still with women who've made those career transitions. But now I get to use my skills to make sure that their stories are being told. Mm-hmm. Because honestly, I am sick of looking up like top entrepreneurs in the world and it's all men. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the year of the lady. It's the year of the woman. And I want to help all the women entrepreneurs get their shine, you know, get on, yeah. do their thing so that they can change the world. Absolutely. I love that mission so, so, so much. That was powerful for sure. I mean, it's so true. It's like, there are so many of us out there, but like we, I feel like there's like, we're not represented in the same way that male entrepreneurs are, you know, it's like, they're, you know, these like big, strong, and like, just like these people, you know, who are like, like, powerhouses but it's more of like you know like they're just they it's very like you know like they're on some sort of like pedestal in a sense right but it's like you know women are doing the same things that they are you know like we're hand in hand right next to each other so why aren't we recognized the same way you know why can't you know a woman be number two or number you know even number one like in that list you know um and so I definitely feel that that is something that needs to uh be changed for sure and like you said like you know the entrepreneurial journey it it changes every step of the way you know I started out wanting to be a personal development speaker I now run my own social media agency don't really know how you know one correlates with the other um but somehow I fell in love with both of it and I'm you know continuing to do both of it at the same time because I just it just brings me so much joy and it brings me purpose to help other speakers, podcasters find more time in their day, you know, by giving up some things. And so I love, love, love your mission. Before I roll in to the final question of this podcast episode, I want you to tell everyone where they can find you on the web, on social, all the places. Go for it. Yeah, I make it kind of easy. 
Exactly. So my website, you can go to it's drericabydesign.com. It's Erica with the K, spelled mm-hmm. the right way. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Dr. Erica by Design. Yes. And all of her links will be in the show notes below. For the final question of the podcast, this is a question that I've asked every single guest who has ever been on. So based off of the title, which is fashion, your passion, what is one tip that you would give those who are dreaming based off of how you have fashioned your passion? One tip to give them based on how I fashioned my passion. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I said it already. It's screw what society thinks. Just (laughs) we've been lied to. (laughs) It's not about your title. It's not about your your degree. It's about you doing what makes you happy. You doing what you are innately put on this earth to do. You doing what you're designed to do Mm -hmm. in your lifetime Mm -hmm. and going after it wholeheartedly and doing it unapologetically. Yeah. I love that so much. It is so, so, so true. You've spoken so many truths today. Erica, thank you so much for coming on the pod today. It was a pleasure chatting with you. And for those of you listening, I will talk to you guys next week.